In our universe, there are numerous enigmas waiting to be unraveled, ranging from the vast expanse of space filled with galaxies, stars and planets, to the immense forces shaping reality itself. Let's embark on an intriguing journey through some of the most awe-inspiring mysteries of deep space. Our journey begins with the aftermath of the Big Bang, an immense explosion that occurred about 13.8 billion years ago. At that time, the universe was in its infancy, brimming with intense heat and energy. This explosion set the stage for the formation of space and time as we know them today. Immediately after the Big Bang, the universe was incredibly hot and dense. Within a fraction of a second, it started expanding rapidly, cooling down as it did so. This cooling allowed the fundamental forces of nature, like gravity and electromagnetism, to come into existence. As the universe expanded and cooled further, it became conducive to the creation of subatomic particles such as quarks and electrons, which eventually combined to form protons and neutrons. Despite this, the universe remained too hot for these particles to form atoms. It wasn't until around 380,000 years after the Big Bang that protons and neutrons began to merge, forming the nuclei of the simplest elements, hydrogen and helium. This process, known as nucleosynthesis, marked the birth of the universe's most abundant elements. Alongside hydrogen and helium, trace amounts of lithium were also produced during this period, laying the groundwork for the complex chemistry necessary for the emergence of stars, galaxies and planets. As the universe expanded further and cooled down, gravity started pulling together clouds of hydrogen and helium gas, leading to the birth of the first stars. These early stars were pivotal in shaping the universe's evolution. Through nuclear fusion in their cores, they synthesized heavier elements like carbon, oxygen and iron. When these stars eventually exploded as supernovae, they scattered these elements across space, paving the way for the formation of new stars, planets, and eventually, life itself. The cosmic microwave background radiation is a faint glow that fills the universe, giving us a glimpse of what the cosmos looked like just 380,000 years after the Big Bang. This glow is not just a historical artifact, but a treasure trove of information about the early universe, its ingredients, and how it evolved. Its discovery in the 1960s marked a turning point in astrophysics, offering strong evidence for the Big Bang Theory. The CMB is essentially the afterglow of the universe's explosive birth, stretched and cooled over billions of years as the universe expanded. Its remarkable uniformity and tiny temperature variations reveal a fascinating story about the universe's beginnings. One captivating aspect of the CMB is its incredible consistency across vast distances, its temperature hovers around 2.7 Kelvin or minus 270.45 degrees Celsius with only minor fluctuations. These fluctuations are crucial because they represent the seeds from which galaxies, stars and eventually planets formed. They are the building blocks of the large-scale structure of the universe we see today. Moreover, the CMB gives us clues about the early universe's composition. By studying its light, scientists can deduce that the universe was primarily composed of hydrogen and helium in its early days. This supports theories of nucleosynthesis, which explain how the first elements formed shortly after the Big Bang. Additionally, the polarization of the CMB's light, akin to how polarized sunglasses reduce glare, offers insights into the early universe's conditions. Patterns in polarization trace back to gravitational waves moving through the young universe, indirectly supporting the theory of inflation. Inflation proposes that the universe underwent rapid expansion in its earliest moments, smoothing out its structure. Another intriguing insight from the CMB is its role in understanding dark matter and dark energy, enigmatic components that make up most of the universe's mass energy. By studying how CMB radiation interacts with matter over cosmic time, Cosmologists can map out the influence of dark matter in clustering matter together and the role of dark energy in accelerating the universe's expansion. After the Big Bang, the universe was a chaotic sea of energy, poised to transform into the ordered cosmos we see today. This transformation was guided by the emergence and shaping of the laws of physics, the basic rules that control how the universe behaves. At the beginning, the universe was incredibly hot, 
and all four fundamental forces of nature, gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear forces, were merged together. As the universe cooled down, these forces began to separate, a crucial step in forming the universe we know. The first to split was the strong nuclear force, which holds atomic nuclei together. This separation allowed the formation of the first subatomic particles, like quarks and electrons, just moments after the Big Bang. As the universe expanded and cooled further, quarks came together to create protons and neutrons, the basic units of atoms. This period, called the quark epoch, was vital in determining the amount and types of matter that would dominate the universe. Then came the electroweak epoch, where electromagnetism and the weak nuclear force became distinct. This was important for creating different types of particles and antiparticles, and for tipping the balance in favor of matter over antimatter in the universe. Without this tilt, matter and antimatter would have annihilated each other, leaving no galaxies, stars, or planets. If you're still watching, please like the video and hit the bell to be notified when we post our weekly astronomy documentaries. As the universe continued to cool, atoms could finally form marking a phase called recombination about 380,000 years after the Big Bang. This was a significant moment because it allowed light particles or photons to move freely for the first time, creating what we now call the cosmic microwave background radiation, a snapshot of the universe at that time. The laws of physics, especially electromagnetism, played a crucial role in this process, governing how electrons and nuclei combined to form neutral atoms. During this period, gravity, the weakest but most influential force, started shaping the universe on a grand scale. Areas slightly denser than their surroundings began to collapse, forming the earliest stars and galaxies. This gravitational clustering process is ongoing, shaping the cosmos by creating galaxy clusters and superclusters. Over billions of years, these forces, guided by the laws of physics, transformed the universe from a hot, dense state into the diverse cosmos we see today. Elements forged inside stars were spread into space by supernovae, providing the raw materials for new stars, planets, and eventually life. The laws of physics emerging after the Big Bang not only governed the creation and behavior of fundamental particles, but also steered the universe's evolution toward complexity. Exploring the mysteries of the cosmos, the process of galaxy formation and evolution emerges as a fundamental aspect of modern astrophysics. It gives us insight into how matter dances under the influence of gravity in an expanding universe, unfolding over billions of years, starting from tiny density fluctuations after the Big Bang, which we can still see in the cosmic microwave background radiation. The tail begins in the early universe, a nearly uniform field sprinkled with slight overdensities. Though small, these overdensities were the seeds for all future structures in the universe. Driven by gravity's pull, denser regions attracted more matter, growing larger and denser over time. This gravitational attraction was the initial step in the formation of galaxies. As these regions accumulated more gas and dark matter, an enigmatic substance that doesn't emit light but affects visible matter through gravity, they collapsed under their own weight. As matter collapsed under gravity, invisible dark matter halos formed, providing a framework for visible matter to gather. Within these halos, gas clouds condensed, heating up until stars could form. These early stars gave birth to the first galaxies, which were simpler and smaller than the ones we see today. As time passed, these galaxies evolved and interacted. Some merged to form larger galaxies, while others were torn apart by gravity. This period was chaotic, marked by frequent collisions that triggered bursts of star formation shaping the galaxy's structures. Stars within galaxies have lifetimes ranging from millions to billions of years, depending on their size. Massive stars end their lives in supernova explosions scattering heavier elements into space, which form the basis of new stars and planets. Supermassive black holes found at the centers of most large galaxies also influence their evolution. As they consume matter, they emit energy that affects star formation throughout the galaxy. Galaxies grow and change over time, with their shapes and sizes reflecting their histories of formation, interaction, and internal processes. 
Spiral galaxies with their spinning disks and arms, elliptical galaxies of various shapes, and irregular galaxies with no distinct form, all offer insights into their origins and the dynamic universe they inhabit. Supermassive black holes, found at the heart of many galaxies, play a crucial role in shaping their characteristics. Ranging from millions to billions of times the mass of our Sun, these massive entities are central to the story of galaxy evolution. They're not just cosmic curiosities, they are essential players in the galactic drama. Supermassive black holes found at the centers of galaxies play a crucial role in shaping the cosmos. Their immense gravitational pull not only controls the movement of stars and gas clouds within a galaxy, but also emits powerful radiation as they consume surrounding material. This radiation, spanning from radio waves to X-rays, has profound effects on the galaxy's environment. One significant impact is their ability to regulate star formation through a process called feedback. As matter falls into the black hole, it releases energy that heats and disperses nearby gas clouds, preventing them from collapsing to form new stars. This delicate balance of activity from the black hole determines the fate of star formation in the galaxy. Too much activity can strip away the galaxy's gas, halting star formation, while too little can lead to uncontrolled star formation, drastically altering the galaxy's composition. Furthermore, the growth of supermassive black holes is intertwined with the evolution of their host galaxies. Observations reveal a correlation between the black hole's mass and the properties of the galaxy's central bulge, suggesting a mutual influence. This connection hints at a cycle of gas accretion and star formation regulated by the black hole's feedback mechanism. Additionally, supermassive black holes contribute to the formation of galactic structures. They can generate powerful jets of material, moving close to the speed of light, carving out large empty spaces in the space between galaxies, affecting gas distribution and the formation of galaxy clusters. Moreover, when galaxies merge, their central black holes can collide and merge as well, emitting gravitational waves. These waves, ripples in space-time, offer insights into fundamental physics and the violent processes driving galaxy evolution. Thus, the interaction between supermassive black holes and galaxies is a dynamic process crucial to understanding the cosmos's intricate workings. Let's delve into the fascinating journey of stars, Imagine it as a story of transformation, where stars not only evolve themselves, but also contribute to the universe's elemental makeup. It all begins in the vast, cold clouds of interstellar gas and dust, where the groundwork for stars is laid. First comes the birth stage, which happens within nebulae, huge clouds made of gas and dust. Within these nebulae, denser regions start collapsing under gravity's pull, heating up as they clump together. When the core of this collapsing cloud reaches a certain density and temperature, nuclear fusion sparks, marking the star's birth. This process turns hydrogen into helium, releasing light and heat, propelling the star into its main sequence phase. A stable period balancing fusion's outward pressure with gravity's pull. What happens next depends on the star's mass. Smaller stars, like our Sun, swell into red giants, Fusing helium into heavier elements like carbon and oxygen, they eventually shed their outer layers forming planetary nebulae, leaving behind a dense, cooling white dwarf. For larger stars, the journey is more dramatic. After exhausting their hydrogen fuel, they start fusing heavier elements until iron forms in their cores. Fusion halts at iron since fusing it consumes more energy than it releases. This leads to a core collapse, triggering a supernova explosion, a spectacular event that can briefly outshine entire galaxies. Supernovae are essential for element formation, scattering heavier elements throughout the cosmos. Little reminder to subscribe if you haven't, so you can keep up with our future astronomy documentaries. Much love everyone. When massive stars meet their explosive end, they leave behind remarkable remnants. Neutron stars, or if they're hefty enough, black holes, regions where gravity is so intense that even light can't escape. Stars, throughout their existence, act as cosmic factories, crafting and dispersing the materials vital for planets and life. Every bit of carbon, oxygen and iron within us originates from stars or their explosive finales, binding us closely to the universe. 
Supernovae, neutron stars, and black holes are among the universe's most extraordinary phenomena, each with its significant role in shaping cosmic evolution and enriching our grasp of physics. These celestial occurrences aren't just captivating, they're crucial for element creation and the universe's structure. Supernovae especially are dramatic star deaths, so dazzling they can briefly outshine entire galaxies. They happen in two main ways, when a massive star's core implodes due to its gravity, or when a white dwarf gobbles up material from a companion star, triggering a thermonuclear explosion. Supernovae are pivotal for spreading elements heavier than iron into space. These elements, forged within stars or during supernova eruptions, are fundamental for planet formation and sustaining life. Supernovae, the explosive deaths of stars, have a profound impact on their surroundings. They shape the interstellar environment, sometimes triggering new star formation and dispersing gas and dust. Neutron stars can emerge from these explosions. They form when a massive star's core collapses so tightly that protons and electrons combine, creating neutrons. These objects are incredibly dense, packing the mass of a sun into a sphere just 20 kilometers wide. Neutron stars come with intense gravitational and magnetic fields, often emitting regular pulses of radiation known as pulses. These serve as beacons in space, aiding astronomers in exploring the universe's properties, from testing gravity theories to measuring cosmic distances. On the other hand, black holes, the most enigmatic of cosmic phenomena, arise when a massive star's core implodes, creating a region where gravity is so strong that not even light can escape. Predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity, black holes have been a subject of intense scientific scrutiny. Black holes influence galaxies' dynamics significantly. Supermassive black holes at their cores regulate star formation and galaxy evolution through their gravitational pull and energetic processes from matter accretion. Beyond their roles in element creation and structural formation, these phenomena serve as natural laboratories for extreme physics. Scientists study gravity, density and energy conditions that are impossible to replicate on Earth. Observing and modeling them has deepened our understanding of matter, space and time, reshaping our comprehension of the cosmos. The formation of planetary systems around stars is a captivating part of the cosmic story, showing how swirling clouds of gas and dust come together to create the diverse worlds orbiting stars across the universe. This process starts much like the birth of stars themselves, with the collapse of a molecular cloud. Within these vast clouds, denser areas begin to collapse under their own gravity, possibly triggered by a nearby supernova shockwave. This collapse forms a spinning disk of gas and dust around a new central star, which, powered by nuclear fusion, illuminates its corner of the cosmos. Meanwhile, the material in the disk starts the intricate process of forming planets. Over time, particles in the disk collide and stick together, forming clumps known as planetesimals, the early building blocks of planets. Through accretion, these planetesimals keep colliding and merging, growing into protoplanets. The inner, hotter part of the disk tends to form rocky planets like Earth and Mars, while the colder outer regions produce gas giants and icy worlds. However, the journey from a swirling disk of debris to a bustling planetary system is influenced by various factors, especially the central star's properties. Its mass, brightness and magnetic activity can greatly affect the formation process and the eventual makeup of the planetary system. Moreover, interactions between emerging planets can lead to dynamic changes, with some being expelled from the system or colliding with others to form larger bodies. When we talk about what makes a planet suitable for life, the idea of the habitable zone, often called the Goldilocks zone, becomes important. This zone refers to the range of distances from a star where conditions might be just right, not too hot, not too cold, for liquid water to exist on a planet's surface, a key ingredient for life as we know it. But being in this zone is just part of the story. A planet's atmosphere and magnetic field also play vital roles in maintaining conditions conducive to life. An atmosphere helps regulate temperature, shields the surface from harmful radiation, and provides essential elements for life, while a magnetic field protects the planet from stellar winds, preserving its atmosphere over time. 
Factors like the planet's composition, geological activity, and the presence of liquid water also influence its habitability. For instance, geological activity can recycle carbon, stabilizing the climate over long periods. The search for exoplanets, planets beyond our solar system, uses various methods, each revealing new worlds in the vastness of space. This exploration not only enhances our understanding of planetary systems, but also brings us closer to answering the age-old question, are we alone in the universe? One successful method for finding exoplanets is the transit method, which detects the slight dimming of a star's light as a planet passes in front of it. This method has been fruitful, especially with missions like NASA's Kepler Space Telescope, which monitored the brightness of thousands of stars, uncovering a diverse array of exoplanets. Another method is the radial velocity method, which measures the star's movement towards and away from us, caused by the gravitational pull of an orbiting planet. This method provides information about the planet's mass and orbit. Direct imaging is a tough but rewarding method where astronomers snap actual pictures of exoplanets by blocking out the star's light, giving us a glimpse into the planet's atmosphere. Another method, gravitational microlensing, relies on how a planet's gravity bends light from a distant star, briefly making the star appear brighter and revealing the presence of an orbiting planet. Among the thousands of exoplanets discovered, some catch our attention for their unique traits or potential to support life. Take Kepler 22b, one of the first planets found in its star's habitable zone, hinting at the possibility of liquid water on its surface. Then there's TRAPPIST-1e, part of a system of seven Earth-sized planets orbiting a dwarf star, sparking interest due to its potential for water and habitability. Proxima Centauri b, in the habitable zone of the nearest star to the Sun, offers hope for studying a potentially habitable planet relatively close by. Meanwhile, HD 209458b, nicknamed Osiris, stands out for being the first exoplanet where scientists detected an atmosphere, giving us clues about what these distant worlds are made of. Each of these discoveries adds a unique piece to our understanding of the diversity and complexity of planetary systems in our galaxy. They also highlight the incredible progress we've made in spotting and studying distant planets, bringing us closer to knowing if life exists beyond our solar system. The quest for exoplanets not only expands our knowledge, but also reshapes our perspective in the cosmos, revealing the endless possibilities among the stars. Dark matter and dark energy are two of the most significant discoveries in modern cosmology altering our understanding of the universe's makeup and its dynamic evolution. Dark matter, a mysterious substance that doesn't emit, absorb or reflect light, making it invisible to current telescopes, has been inferred through its gravitational effects on visible matter and the structure of the universe. Vera Rubin's observations in the 1970s studying the rotation, curves of galaxies, were among the first clues to dark matter. She found that stars at the galaxy's edges moved faster than expected, hinting at unseen mass influencing their motion. Further evidence comes from gravitational lensing, where the gravity of massive objects bends light from distant galaxies. The degree of bending suggests there's much more mass present than what's visible, indicating dark matter's presence. Measurements of the cosmic microwave background radiation, the glow from the Big Bang, also support dark matter's existence, aligning with predictions only when accounting for its effects. Dark energy, a mysterious force propelling the universe's accelerated expansion, has been chiefly detected through observations of distant supernovae. Astronomers studying type wire supernovae in the late 1990s noticed they were dimmer than expected. This dimness suggested that rather than slowing down, as gravity would predict, the universe's expansion is speeding up. This acceleration is attributed to dark energy, which makes up about 68% of the universe's total energy. Dark energy's effects aren't just seen in the universe's expansion, but also hold significant implications for its future. If dark energy remains dominant, the universe could keep expanding indefinitely, leading to a cold, empty cosmos in the distant future. Alternatively, if dark energy behaves differently, it could result in various scenarios, like the universe collapsing or expanding even faster. 
Together, dark matter and dark energy form the basis of the Lambda Cold Dark Matter model, the standard cosmological model describing the universe's evolution from the Big Bang to its present state. Exploring deeper into space's mysteries, we encounter phenomena like quasars, pulsars, gamma ray bursts, and the enigmatic nature of magnetic fields. Each of these phenomena offers a unique peek into the extreme environments and processes shaping the universe. Quasars, for instance, are incredibly luminous centers of distant galaxies, powered by supermassive black holes. As matter falls into these black holes, it forms a swirling disk, heating up and emitting immense energy across the electromagnetic spectrum, particularly visible light, X-rays, and ultraviolet radiation. Despite their vast distance, quasars shine with the brightness of billions of stars, yet they're compact enough to fit within our solar system. These objects are essential for understanding how the universe evolved in its early days, shedding light on the growth of supermassive black holes and the formation of galaxies. Pulsars, for example, are what remains when massive stars explode and collapse into dense neutron stars. These stars may be tiny, only about 20 kilometers across, but they're incredibly dense, with masses similar to that of the Sun. Pulsars emit beams of radiation from their magnetic poles, spinning like cosmic lighthouses. When these beams cross Earth's path, we detect them as pulses of radiation, giving pulsars their name. Pulsars are like precise cosmic clocks, helping astronomers study space's properties and test theories of gravity. Gamma ray bursts, or GRBs, are the most powerful explosions in the universe, briefly outshining entire galaxies with intense bursts of gamma rays. These bursts, lasting from milliseconds to minutes, likely come from two main events, massive stars collapsing into black holes, causing supernovae or the collision of neutron stars. GRBs offer insights into these explosive events and the early universe, giving clues about star formation rates and the origin of heavy elements. Magnetic fields are widespread throughout space and play a crucial role in shaping the interstellar medium, guiding cosmic rays and affecting galaxy formation and evolution. They can be generated by moving fluids inside stars and planets called the dynamo effect, or leftover from the universe's early days. We detect them through their impact on cosmic particles and the polarization of light from distant stars and galaxies. Understanding space magnetic fields helps astronomers unravel galaxy magnetic structures, interstellar gas and dust behavior, and astrophysical jet dynamics. In our quest to explore the possibility of life beyond Earth, scientists have outlined key conditions necessary for life as we know it to thrive. These include having liquid water, a source of energy, and the right mix of chemicals like carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Liquid water is crucial as it acts as a medium for biochemical reactions, energy fuels, metabolic processes, and the correct chemical elements serve as life's building blocks. To search for signs of life, known as biosignatures, on exoplanets and within our own solar system, scientists use various innovative methods. For exoplanets, the transit method is employed, which detects planets as they pass in front of their host stars. This not only helps discover new worlds, but also allows scientists to study their atmospheres. During a transit, a small amount of starlight passes through the planet's atmosphere, enabling the identification of gases that could indicate biological activity. For example, the presence of oxygen, methane or nitrous oxide, especially in combinations unlikely to occur naturally, might suggest the possibility of life. Another method involves direct imaging, where light from planets themselves is captured, enabling the study of their chemical makeup, temperature and surface features. Though challenging due to the brightness of stars compared to planets, technological advancements are making this more feasible. Within our solar system, missions to Mars, like the rovers exploring its surface, search for evidence of past or present microbial life by analyzing soil and rock samples. These rovers look for signs of organic compounds, minerals related to water, and isotopic signatures indicating biological processes. Moons like Europa and Enceladus, with their subsurface oceans beneath icy crusts, are also promising candidates. Future missions plan to explore these oceans for signs of life, 
using techniques like flybys to sample water plumes or sending landers and ice-penetrating probes. In our quest to find life beyond Earth, we're also exploring Venus, where the discovery of phosphine gas in its atmosphere has sparked interest despite the planet's harsh surface conditions. While phosphine could have non-biological origins, its presence highlights the diverse places scientists are investigating for signs of life. Human space exploration, aiming to unlock cosmic mysteries and ensure our species' long-term survival, faces numerous challenges alongside its ambitious goals. From technical and physiological hurdles of extended space travel to logistical and ethical considerations of colonization, these efforts test current technology and human endurance. A major challenge of long-duration space travel is safeguarding astronauts' health. Spending prolonged periods in space exposes crews to risks like muscle and bone density loss due to microgravity, radiation exposure beyond Earth's protective magnetic field, and psychological strains from isolation. To tackle these issues, innovative solutions are needed, such as better radiation shielding, exercise routines to combat physical decline, and support systems for mental well-being. Another hurdle is creating life support and sustainability systems that can function efficiently over long periods. These systems must provide air, water and food with minimal reliance on resupply missions. Closed-loop life support systems, which recycle waste into usable resources, are vital for sustaining space habitats during lengthy missions. The challenges of propulsion and energy supply are crucial in space exploration. Current propulsion methods limit how fast spacecraft can travel, which means longer missions and more exposure to hazards for astronauts. Developing faster propulsion systems like nuclear thermal or electric propulsion could shorten travel time, making missions to Mars and beyond more practical. For energy, we're exploring options like solar power, nuclear reactors and using materials found on other planets. As we consider longer missions and eventual colonization, ethical and logistical questions arise. Who gets to go to space? How do we protect other planets' environments? It's vital to establish legal and ethical guidelines for space exploration and resource use. The goals of human space exploration are diverse and ambitious. We aim to conduct scientific research, search for alien life, test technologies for living in space, and eventually establish human settlements on other planets to ensure our survival. Mars, with its Earth-like features, is a key focus for colonization efforts, but the Moon is also seen as a stepping stone for deeper space exploration. Fast radio bursts are one of the universe's biggest mysteries. They're quick flashes of powerful radio waves from space, lasting just milliseconds but packing as much energy as the Sun does in days or even weeks. Discovered in 2007, these puzzling signals have intrigued astronomers, leading to lots of research to figure out where they come from and what they mean. Despite being billions of light years away, FRBs shine incredibly bright and disappear fast. Although they're brief, FRBs have been spotted in different parts of the sky. Some sources send out bursts repeatedly, while others are one-off events. This difference has led scientists to suggest various explanations for their origins. Ideas range from supermagnetized neutron stars called magnetars and their explosive behavior to more out-there possibilities like connections to black holes or, though it's highly speculative and lacks evidence, signals from advanced alien civilizations. Studying FRBs isn't just about figuring out the bursts themselves, it's also about using them to explore the hidden matter scattered across the universe. There are many factors to consider in the search for extraterrestrial life. These include how many stars are forming in our galaxy, how many of those stars have planets, how many planets could support life, how often life actually arises on suitable planets, how often intelligent life evolves, how many civilizations develop technology that sends signals into space, and how long these civilizations keep sending signals. While the Drake equation helps estimate the number of alien civilizations, Many of its variables are still uncertain. We don't know enough about how life forms or how civilizations develop, and the Milky Way is vast and complex. So, estimates of communicative civilizations in our galaxy vary widely depending on the values we use. But despite its uncertainties, the Drake equation has been crucial in shaping how we talk about aliens and guiding our research. 
It shows us the main factors influencing life and civilizations beyond Earth and sparks debates and studies in astrobiology and the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI. SETI, a project focused on finding intelligent life elsewhere, has been directly influenced by the Drake Equation. SETI researchers use different methods like listening for radio and light signals that could come from alien technologies. So far, we haven't found any definitive proof of alien intelligence, but SETI's ongoing work shows our dedication to exploring this possibility. After thinking about the Drake Equation, we run into the Fermi Paradox. Named after physicist Enrico Fermi, it's a puzzling question. If there's a high chance of alien civilizations existing, why haven't we found any evidence of them? The universe is huge, with billions of stars and many planets that could support life like ours. With the universe being so old, there's been plenty of time for intelligent life to develop and spread. But despite all this, our searches for signs of alien civilizations have come up empty. This silence raises big questions about life in the universe and what we know about it. There are a few ideas to explain this silence called the Fermi Paradox. One thought is that while life might be common, intelligent life capable of talking to us is very rare. Another idea is the Great Filter, which says there's a super hard step life needs to take to get from simple to smart, and we've either already done it or it's still ahead of us, possibly putting us in danger. Some explanations look at what happens to civilizations, suggesting they might not last long, either destroying themselves or finding ways to talk that we can't detect. Then there's the zoo idea, which says aliens might be deliberately avoiding us, like zookeepers not wanting to mess with the animals' natural lives. Exploring the cosmos leads us to a fascinating mystery called the Great Attractor. It's a mysterious area in space with such strong gravity that it affects how galaxies move, even ones millions of light years away. Found in the direction of the Hydra and Centaurus constellations, it's about 220 million light years from Earth. What's puzzling is that it's pulling galaxies, including our Milky Way, toward it incredibly fast, like millions of kilometers per hour. Figuring out the Great Attractor is tough because it's in a part of the sky called the Zone of Avoidance, blocked by the Milky Way's dust and gas. But thanks to better X-ray and radio telescopes, scientists are starting to see through the dust and understand more about it. It would seem the Great Attractor isn't just one huge thing, but a bunch of galaxy clusters bunched together. It's part of an even bigger structure called the Laniakea Supercluster, which includes our galaxy and about 100,000 others. The Great Attractor's gravity and how it moves galaxies show us how everything in space is connected and how the universe is always changing. It reminds us of the huge scales and powerful forces out there that we're still trying to understand. Switching gears to our own solar system, there's something else puzzling astronomers. The weird paths some comets take. Comets, made of ice, rock and other stuff, have orbits that can teach us a lot about the farthest parts of our solar system and the forces at work there. Certain comets follow highly elliptical paths around the sun, bringing them close to its warmth, where they develop striking tails, before flinging them back into the farthest reaches of our solar system, or even ejecting them from it altogether. These unique orbits challenge our comprehension of how our solar system operates, and suggest the presence of unseen factors at play. One proposed explanation for these eccentric orbits lies in the gravitational influences of two significant regions beyond Neptune's orbit, the Oort cloud and the Kuiper belt. The Oort cloud, envisioned as a vast spherical shell enveloping our solar system, is believed to harbor billions of comets. Periodically, the gravitational pull exerted by passing stars or the galactic tide, the gravitational force exerted by the Milky Way itself can perturb comets in these regions, flinging them toward the inner solar system on their unusual trajectories. Another intriguing hypothesis involves the existence of a yet-to-be-discovered massive object in the outer solar system, often dubbed as Planet Nine. This theoretical planet could potentially explain the peculiar orbits observed in some trans-Neptunian objects and comets guiding them into paths that defy expectations based solely on known gravitational influences. Studying the orbits of comets not only enriches our understanding of the structure of the solar system and the forces shaping it, 
but also offers insights into its history. By tracking the journeys of these icy wanderers, scientists can glean information about the distribution of mass in the outer regions of our solar system and the potential for interactions with interstellar objects. As our observational methods and computational models advance, so too will our grasp of these extraordinary comet trajectories, providing answers to age-old inquiries while undoubtedly prompting new ones about the intricate choreography of celestial bodies within our solar system. Titan and Enceladus, two of Saturn's moons, have caught the attention of scientists due to their fascinating features, which offer valuable insights into the variety and potential habitability of environments in our solar system. Titan, Saturn's largest moon and the second largest in our solar system, is surrounded by a dense atmosphere rich in nitrogen and organic molecules. This atmosphere creates a unique environment where rivers, lakes and seas exist, not made of water like on Earth, but composed of methane and ethane. These hydrocarbon seas are intriguing because they represent a world completely different from ours, yet possibly able to support life forms adapted to cold, liquid methane conditions. Moreover, Titan experiences a cycle similar to Earth's water cycle, but with methane and ethane instead, including clouds, rain and liquid bodies on its surface. This offers a captivating comparison to Earth's hydrological processes in an alien setting. In contrast, Enceladus, a smaller moon of Saturn, is known for its active geysers shooting plumes of water vapor and ice particles from cracks in its icy surface. These geysers suggest the presence of a subsurface ocean beneath the moon's icy shell, raising the exciting possibility of a habitable environment. Samples of the ejected material, which contribute to one of Saturn's rings, have been directly analyzed by spacecraft, revealing complex organic compounds, salts and silica particles. The presence of these compounds indicates that Enceladus's ocean is not only liquid, but also in contact with the moon's rocky mantle, where hydrothermal processes might provide the energy needed for life. The phenomena observed on Titan and Enceladus demonstrate the diverse range of potentially habitable environments beyond Earth within our solar system. Titan and Enceladus, two of Saturn's moons, challenge our understanding of habitable environments in space. Titan surprises us with its cold, hydrocarbon-based system, featuring rivers and seas made of methane and ethane. On the other hand, Enceladus offers a more familiar potential habitat with the subsurface ocean beneath its icy surface. Both moons show us that life might exist in unexpected places, expanding our search for extraterrestrial life beyond Earth. As we explore these moons and others like them, we're getting closer to understanding the complexity of our solar system's moons and the processes behind their unique features. We're also discovering the potential for life in environments we once thought were uninhabitable. Space-time, a fundamental concept in physics, combines the three dimensions of space with time into a single continuum. This idea, based on Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity, suggests that mass and energy bend space-time, influencing how objects move and time flows. Space-time isn't just a background for events. It's dynamic and shaped by the universe's contents. Celestial bodies like the Sun and Earth create curves in space-time, affecting their gravitational interactions. This curvature is what we perceive as gravity. For example, Earth orbits the Sun, because the Sun's mass curves space-time, creating a stable orbit for Earth. Understanding space-time as a flexible fabric has big implications for how we see light move, how time flows, and how the universe is structured. Even though light doesn't weigh anything, it still follows the bends and curves of space-time. This leads to cool stuff like gravitational lensing, where light from faraway stars gets bent around really big things like galaxy clusters. Time also acts differently depending on how warped space-time is. In places where gravity is stronger, time moves slower. This idea, predicted by general relativity, has been proven true by careful experiments. It's called gravitational time dilation, and it's not just a cool theory. It's actually used to adjust the time on GPS satellites so they match up with Earth's time. Space-time isn't just about gravity. It's also the key to understanding some super weird things like black holes and how the universe is expanding. Black holes are places where space-time gets so twisted that not even light can escape. They're like the ultimate gravity traps, 
where the usual rules of physics don't apply. And then there's the universe itself, which seems to be stretching out over time, dragging galaxies along with it. That's why faraway galaxies look redder. They're moving away from us because of the universe's expansion. Thinking about the universe's shape is also mind-bending. It's like it's finite but endless at the same time. This idea, based on general relativity, says that the universe can have a limited size without having a definite edge or boundary. It's one of the big puzzles cosmologists are trying to figure out. Understanding this idea is like picturing the surface of the Earth. Think of the Earth's surface as a flat map. It has a specific size, but you can keep going in any direction and eventually end up where you started without reaching an edge. This analogy helps us grasp the idea of a finite yet unbounded space. Now imagine expanding this idea to the three-dimensional universe we live in. It's possible that the universe could bend back onto itself in a higher dimension, creating a closed loop. In this scenario, if you traveled far enough in a straight line, you'd circle back to your starting point without hitting any boundaries. This concept comes from Einstein's general relativity, which allows for different shapes of the universe based on its density and expansion. A closed universe, which is finite but has no edges, could eventually stop expanding and start contracting, leading to a big crunch. However, current observations like studying the cosmic microwave background radiation and the universe's expansion rate suggest that the universe is flat on large scales and probably goes on forever. Still, the idea of a finite yet unbounded universe is intriguing. It leads us to consider higher dimensions beyond the ones we are familiar with, three spatial dimensions and one time dimension. Exploring these extra dimensions is crucial to advanced physics theories like string theory and M-theory. In string theory, for example, particles aren't tiny points, but vibrating. Strings that exist in multiple dimensions, influencing their properties like mass and charge. String theory suggests that for everything to make sense, there need to be more dimensions than the ones we are familiar with. It proposes the existence of ten dimensions, nine for space and one for time. These extra dimensions are thought to be curled up really tiny, so small that we can't see or measure them with our current technology. Having these extra dimensions could help explain tricky things in physics, like why gravity seems weaker compared to other forces. If gravity can sneak into these extra dimensions, it might seem weaker in our everyday four-dimensional world. Beyond that, these higher dimensions open up some fascinating ideas about how the universe works. They could mean there are parallel universes or other weird things like multi-dimensional objects called brains floating around. Our universe might just be one of many on one of these brains. And interactions between these brains could be behind major events like the Big Bang. Exploring these higher dimensions also helps us try to combine all the forces of nature into one big theory. This theory of everything would tie together everything we know about the universe from the biggest galaxies to the tiniest particles. And it might just be possible with the help of these extra dimensions. The Sun, a massive ball of hot plasma at the center of our solar system, generates its energy through a process called nuclear fusion. Deep within its core, where temperatures exceed 15 million degrees Celsius, hydrogen atoms are compressed under immense pressure, allowing them to fuse together and form helium. This fusion reaction releases a tremendous amount of energy, which eventually makes its way to the surface as sunlight. This fusion process operates on the principle of Einstein's famous equation, E equals max squared, where a tiny amount of mass is converted into a vast amount of energy. Initially, this energy is in the form of gamma rays, which take thousands of years to reach the sun's surface. By the time this energy reaches the surface, it has transformed into visible light and other forms of electromagnetic radiation. Despite the immense amount of energy produced, the fusion process is slow enough that the sun has been shining steadily for about 4.6 billion years and is expected to continue for another 5 billion years. The sun's stability and consistent energy output are essential for life on Earth as it provides the warmth and light necessary for various life processes. This efficient fusion process continuously converts millions of tons of hydrogen into helium every second, ensuring a steady supply of energy for our planet. 
Solar phenomena, which range from harmless to potentially disruptive, have significant effects on Earth, influencing everything from our climate to our daily technology use. These phenomena include solar flares, coronal mass ejections, CMEs, solar wind, and the solar cycle, each impacting Earth uniquely. Solar flares are intense bursts of radiation caused by the release of magnetic energy from sunspots. While the light from a solar flare reaches Earth in about eight minutes, the high-energy particles can take hours to days to arrive. These flares can disrupt radio communications, GPS, signals and power grids by affecting the Earth's upper atmosphere, known as the ionosphere, which interferes with radio wave transmission. Coronal mass ejections, CMEs, are massive bursts of solar wind and magnetic fields that rise above the solar corona or are released into space. They can carry billions of tons of coronal material and a strong magnetic field. When CMEs collide with Earth's magnetosphere, they can cause geomagnetic storms, potentially disrupting satellite operations, power grids and navigation systems. Additionally, the interaction of CMEs with the Earth's magnetosphere can create dazzling auroras near the polar regions. Solar wind is a flow of charged particles emitted from the Sun's outer atmosphere, known as the corona. It interacts with Earth's magnetic field, causing effects like geomagnetic storms. This wind is continuous but varies in strength. It pushes against Earth's magnetic field, compressing it on the side facing the Sun and stretching it out on the opposite side. This interaction can charge particles trapped in Earth's magnetic field, leading to auroras in the upper atmosphere. The solar cycle is a pattern that repeats roughly every 11 years, marking changes in solar activity like sunspots, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections. These changes impact Earth's climate and space weather. During peak activity, the Sun emits more ultraviolet radiation, which can affect the ozone layer in Earth's stratosphere potentially influencing regional weather patterns. Solar activity has even been linked to global climate variations, as seen in historical periods of low solar activity coinciding with cooler temperatures. As our society becomes more reliant on technology, we're increasingly vulnerable to the effects of solar storms on communication and navigation systems. This underscores the importance of monitoring solar activity and developing strategies to mitigate potential disruptions. Speculating about advanced civilizations beyond our own involves a mix of science, philosophy and imagination. These civilizations, if they exist, would likely have advanced technologies and social structures beyond our current understanding. The Kardashev scale offers a framework for categorizing civilizations based on their energy use and technological prowess. On the Kardashev scale, a Type 1 civilization has mastered its planet's energy resources, including solar and geothermal power. They've likely solved environmental and societal issues like climate change and energy shortages. They might have advanced technologies for recycling waste, managing ecosystems, and even controlling weather to boost agriculture and prevent natural disasters. A Type 2 civilization goes beyond its planet to harness the energy of its entire star system. They might build massive structures like Dyson spheres to capture their star's energy. With such power, they could travel between planets and possibly colonize them, reshape orbits, mine asteroids, and even tap into phenomena like black holes or neutron stars. At the top of the scale, a Type III civilization controls energy across an entire galaxy. Their capabilities are mind-boggling, including interstellar travel, star manipulation, and even bending space-time. Their technology would seem like magic to us, reflecting an incredibly advanced understanding of physics and the universe. These stages give us insight into what characteristics advanced civilizations might possess. Advanced civilizations would possess technology that seamlessly aligns with the laws of physics, possibly blurring the line between technology and nature. Their tech would be sustainable, super-efficient, and capable of manipulating matter and energy at its core. For a civilization to climb the Kardashev scale, they must have matured socially and ethically. They'd need to overcome destructive behaviors like warfare and exploitation, finding a balance between advancement and responsibility. They'd likely still have a thirst for exploration and knowledge, pushing the limits of science 
and maybe even transcending physical boundaries in ways beyond our imagination. When it comes to communicating with other civilizations if they want to, their methods and motives would reflect their advanced understanding and abilities. They might spread life throughout the cosmos, guide younger civilizations, or safeguard against threats to existence itself. Understanding the universe deeply changes how we see ourselves within it. As our knowledge grows through advancements in fields like astronomy and physics, we are constantly reminded of the vastness and complexity of the universe. This evolving understanding shifts our worldview, challenging what we think about life, existence and our place in the cosmos. As we delve into the mysteries of the universe, one of the most profound realizations we encounter is just how small we are in the grand scheme of things. Picture this, the universe stretches out unimaginably far, filled with billions upon billions of galaxies, each boasting billions of stars and potentially countless planets. This vastness can leave us feeling humbled, emphasizing the delicate and precious nature of life on our little planet amidst the vastness of space. It reminds us of the rarity and value of our existence, prompting a desire to protect and cherish the fragile balance of life on Earth. But there's more to it. As our understanding of the universe deepens, we also begin to feel a sense of connection and unity. The same laws of physics that govern the movement of galaxies also apply to the tiniest particles here on Earth. And those elements that make up the stars, they're the same ones found within us. This shared foundation suggests that everything from the smallest atom to the grandest galaxy is interconnected. We're not just bystanders in the cosmos, we're an integral part of it. Moreover, our exploration of the universe opens up new possibilities for life beyond Earth, discoveries of exoplanets within habitable zones of distant stars, along with studies of extreme environments on our own planet where life thrives, hint at the potential diversity of life forms out there. This challenges our human-centric views and invites us to consider a wider range of life forms and intelligences. It could even reshape our understanding of what life is and how we might communicate and interact with other forms of intelligence. The intricate interplay between dark matter and baryonic matter the visible substance forming stars, planets and celestial bodies profoundly shapes the structure and motion of galaxies. Despite being invisible and elusive to direct detection, dark matter constitutes a substantial 85% of the universe's mass. Its existence is deduced from gravitational interactions with observable matter, light and the cosmic framework. A pivotal understanding of dark matter emerges from studying galaxy rotation curves, patterns in the velocities of stars and gas clouds circling a galaxy's core. Classical mechanics would predict a decrease in orbital speed with distance from the center, akin to planetary orbits around the Sun. However, observations reveal that stars' velocities within galaxies remain constant or even rise marginally with distance, defying conventional expectations. This inconsistency hints at the presence of a significant unseen mass attributed to dark matter influencing gravitational forces. Dark matter forms extensive halos enveloping galaxies, stretching well beyond their visible boundaries. The gravitational influence exerted by dark matter halos is pivotal in understanding various phenomena observed in galaxies. These halos, comprised primarily of dark matter, exert gravitational forces that significantly affect the motion of stars within galaxies. This influence is particularly evident in the unexpectedly high velocities of stars compared to what would be anticipated based solely on the observable mass of the galaxy. This discrepancy is responsible for the characteristic flat rotation curves observed in galaxies. Moreover, dark matter plays a fundamental role in the formation and evolution of galaxies. In the early stages of the universe, dark matter formed clumps that acted as gravitational scaffolding. Around these structures, ordinary baryonic matter aggregated, eventually leading to the formation of stars, galaxies and larger cosmic structures. The distribution and density of dark matter within these halos directly influenced the characteristics of the galaxies that emerged. For instance, Dense and compact halos often result in the formation of elliptical galaxies, while more extended halos with specific angular momentum distributions can give rise to spiral galaxies. Understanding the interactions between dark matter and baryonic matter 
is crucial for deciphering the large-scale structure of the universe. Dark matter's gravitational effects enhance the clustering of matter in certain regions, giving rise to the intricate web-like structure observed in the cosmos. Galaxies and clusters of galaxies are interconnected by filaments of dark matter, with vast voids separating them. Moreover, recent discoveries regarding the intergalactic medium, IGM, have further enriched our comprehension of galaxy formation and the broader cosmic framework. The IGM, composed of diffuse gas and plasma filling the vast intergalactic spaces, plays a pivotal role in shaping the cosmic web's structure and evolution. Acting as both a reservoir for galaxy formation and a record of the universe's shaping processes, the IGM underscores the dynamic and interconnected nature of cosmic evolution. One significant breakthrough involves the identification of the cosmic web, an extensive network of thread-like structures made up of dark matter and gas. These filaments span the universe, connecting galaxies and clusters of galaxies. By studying distant quasars, highly luminous galaxies located far away, scientists have detected hydrogen and other elements in the intergalactic medium, IGM, by analyzing absorption lines in their spectra. These absorption lines, referred to as the Lyman Alpha Forest, have provided valuable information about the distribution, temperature and composition of the IGM, confirming the existence of the cosmic web and its role in the formation of galaxies. Understanding that the IGM is not merely a passive reservoir of matter, but actively influences the evolution of galaxies, has been a pivotal realization. Gas from the IGM is drawn into gravitational wells created by dark matter, where it cools and condenses, ultimately forming stars and galaxies, a process known as accretion. This process is fundamental to the formation and growth of galaxies. Additionally, feedback mechanisms from phenomena such as star formation and active galactic nuclei inject energy back into the IGM, regulating the inflow and outflow of gas from galaxies and impacting their ability to form stars. Another groundbreaking discovery is the identification of the missing baryons. Early observations of galaxies and galaxy clusters only accounted for a fraction of the ordinary matter predicted by the Big Bang theory. However, studies of the IGM have revealed these missing baryons in the form of the warm-hot intergalactic medium, WIM, a sparse, partially ionized gas that fills the filaments of the cosmic web. Detecting the WIM posed challenges due to its diffuse nature and the high temperatures at which it emits and absorbs radiation. Nonetheless, recent observations using X-ray and ultraviolet telescopes have begun to unveil its properties and distribution. Stars come in different sizes, and their mass plays a key role in their life story, determining how they shine and eventually fade away. The mass affects things like how hot the core gets and how much pressure it's under, which in turn decides what kind of nuclear reactions happen inside. These reactions determine the star's brightness, temperature and how long it will live. Depending on how hefty a star is when it's born, it might end its days as a white dwarf, neutron star or black hole, each with its own cosmic journey. Stars that are up to about eight times heavier than our sun tend to follow a similar path. They spend most of their lives burning hydrogen in their cores, a phase called the main sequence. When they run out of hydrogen, they swell up into red giants. Inside, the core shrinks and heats up, allowing helium to turn into carbon and oxygen. For stars like our sun, this is pretty much where the nuclear fusion party ends. Once all the fuel is used up, the outer layers drift away, forming a planetary nebula, while the core becomes a white dwarf a small but very dense leftover that slowly cools down over billions of years. Heftier stars have more dramatic lives. After they've used up their hydrogen, they become supergiants and start fusing heavier elements in their cores, all the way up to iron. But iron fusion is different. It takes energy instead of giving it off. So when there's too much iron, the core suddenly collapses, leading to a colossal explosion called a supernova. The outer layers of the star are blasted away, leaving behind a super-dense core. If this core is between 1.4 and 3, times the mass of our Sun, it becomes a neutron star, a tiny but incredibly dense object. Imagine a sugar cube of neutron star stuff weighing as much as a mountain on Earth. If the core is even heavier, more than three times the Sun's mass, it collapses into a black hole, 
where gravity is so intense that nothing, not even light, can escape, a point of no return called the event horizon. The mass of a star shapes its entire journey, determining whether it leads a calm life or ends explosively, shining brighter than entire galaxies. These final stages, white dwarfs, neutron stars and black holes, contribute to the universe's cycle of matter, spreading heavy elements forged within them. These elements become building blocks for future stars, planets and potentially life forms, continuing the cosmic evolution. Studying binary star systems, where two stars orbit a common center, plays a crucial role in deepening our understanding of stellar evolution and heavy element creation. These systems, abundant in the universe, offer unique insights into how stars live and die, especially when one star significantly influences the other's evolution. Binary star systems act as natural laboratories, allowing astronomers to observe stellar interactions and refine models of stellar structure, evolution, and the creation of heavier elements. One significant phase observed in some binaries is mass transfer. When one star expands, material from its outer layers can spill onto its companion, altering its mass, composition and path through evolution. This process can give rise to various intriguing phenomena like blue stragglers, stars appearing younger than they are, cataclysmic variables and symbiotic stars. Through mass transfer, binary systems can skip certain stages of evolution or speed up into later ones, shedding light on the diverse paths stars can take. Binary star systems, especially those with compact objects like white dwarfs, neutron stars or black holes, are important places where heavy elements are created. One big event in 2017 showed this when two neutron stars merged, sending out waves in space and light across the electromagnetic spectrum. This event confirmed that these mergers are where a lot of heavy elements like gold and platinum are made. Another interesting thing happens when a white dwarf collects enough material from a companion star. It can explode as a type Ia supernova. These explosions not only spread iron-like elements into space, but also help scientists measure faraway distances in the universe. In binary systems, stars can share material, giving us hints about what's going on inside them. For example, we can see elements made in one star showing up on the surface of its companion, which tells us about how stars change over time and create elements. Binary systems also teach us about how big stars end their lives. When we see black holes or neutron stars in binary pairs, it tells us about the final chapters of massive stars and how these super-dense objects form, detecting the ripples in space caused by merging black holes and neutron. STARS has opened up a new way of studying the universe, helping us learn about what happens in extreme conditions. While we're just starting to explore the atmospheres of planets outside our solar system, it's already showing us how diverse these worlds can be. By comparing these atmospheres to those of planets in our own solar system, scientists are figuring out how these faraway worlds form, what they're made of, and if any of them could be home to life. This comparison is really important for understanding all the different kinds of planets out there and whether life could exist beyond Earth. Exoplanets, or planets outside our solar system, have atmospheres that vary widely in their makeup, temperature and weather patterns. Some resemble the planets in our solar system, while others are quite different. Take, for instance, hot Jupiters, which are gas giants orbiting very close to their stars. These planets have atmospheres mainly composed of hydrogen and helium, similar to Jupiter and Saturn, but they're incredibly hot, even hot enough to vaporize metals like iron and titanium. Surprisingly, we've even detected water vapor in some of these atmospheres, despite the extreme conditions. On the other hand, we've also discovered smaller rocky exoplanets, some of which seem to have atmospheres that might contain water vapor, a crucial component for life as we understand it. But the range of atmospheres doesn't stop there. Some exoplanets have atmospheres high in carbon dioxide or methane, while others have no atmosphere at all, reminiscent of Mercury or the Moon. Studying this diverse array of exoplanet atmospheres gives us valuable insights into how planets form and evolve. For instance, finding heavy elements and compounds in the atmospheres of hot Jupiters suggests a complex history of formation, possibly involving interactions with their protoplanetary disks or other celestial bodies in their systems. 
Similarly, the differences in atmospheric composition among rocky exoplanets hint at variations in their initial materials, distance from their star, and geological activity over time. When scientists evaluate the possibility of life on exoplanets, they compare their atmospheres to those in our solar system. This helps them understand the importance of an atmosphere's composition and stability. An ideal atmosphere can hold liquid water on the planet's surface, shield life from harmful radiation, and maintain a consistent climate over long periods. Earth is the only planet in our solar system that meets all these criteria, making it a standard for identifying potentially habitable exoplanets. Finding certain gases like oxygen, ozone, methane, or nitrous oxide in an exoplanet's atmosphere could indicate biological activity. This is especially true if these gases are detected together in combinations unlikely to occur through non-biological processes alone. However, interpreting these signs is tricky because they can also form through non-biological means under specific conditions. Ah, recent discoveries in planetary science have revolutionized our understanding of how planets form and the diversity of planetary systems. Advanced telescopes and space missions have revealed a vast array of planets and planetary systems, challenging existing theoretical models. For instance, we've found hot Jupiters, gas giants orbiting very close to their stars, in much hotter environments than those in our solar system. This challenges traditional ideas about where and how gas giants form, leading scientists to rethink theories of planetary system evolution. Another surprise has been the discovery of super-Earths and mini-Neptunes, types of planets unlike any in our solar system. These findings are expanding our understanding of what's possible in the universe and driving further exploration and research into planetary science. Planets ranging in mass from Earth to Neptune have stirred up curiosity among scientists about how planets form and why some end up rocky while others become gas giants. The variety in their size, density and makeup hints at a complexity in planet formation that early models didn't foresee, mainly because those models were based on our own solar system. Discoveries of planetary systems orbiting binary or even trinary star systems add another layer of complexity. Previously, it seemed unlikely for planets to maintain stable orbits in such dynamic environments, but we've found many planets doing just that. This challenges our understanding of how planets form and persist, suggesting that planetary systems might be more resilient and adaptable than we thought. Furthermore, the detection of free-floating planets, ones not tethered to any star aimlessly wandering through space, suggests that planets being ejected from developing or mature planetary systems could be more common than we imagined. This shakes up our ideas about how stable and long-lasting planetary systems really are, and it prompts questions about what forces might be behind these ejections. These recent discoveries are reshaping how we see the variety of planetary systems and how planets form. They underline what makes our solar system unique while revealing the many different places where planets can arise and change over time. Because of this, astronomers and planetary scientists are continually updating their theories. They're taking in new observations and building more advanced models to understand the complexity of planetary systems across the galaxy. Moving to another cosmic mystery, let's talk about dark energy. This mysterious force makes up about 68% of the universe's total energy and is causing the universe to expand faster and faster. Its existence was confirmed in the late 1990s by studying distant exploding stars called supernovae. This discovery completely changed our view of the universe, raising new questions about its future and the rules that govern it. Scientists are exploring various ideas to understand dark energy better. One idea is called quintessence, which is a type of energy field that changes as the universe ages. This is different from the static energy field that Einstein initially suggested to explain the universe's expansion. Quintessence models propose that dark energy might change in strength over time, possibly explaining why the universe is now expanding faster after slowing down for billions of years after the Big Bang. Another idea is that gravity might work differently on large scales than we thought, which could also explain the accelerating expansion. These theories challenge our understanding of gravity itself and need to be thoroughly tested with observations. 
That's where projects like the Dark Energy Survey, DES, come in. Using a powerful camera on a telescope in Chile, DES has mapped millions of galaxies to study how the universe's structure has evolved over time. By looking at how clusters of galaxies have changed under the influence of dark energy, scientists hope to uncover more about its nature and how it shapes the cosmos. Similarly, the Vera C. Rubin Observatory's Legacy Survey of Space and Time, LSST, is set to give us a whole new perspective on dark energy. Over a decade, LSST will scan the sky in great detail, observing billions of galaxies to see how the universe's expansion has changed over time. Another groundbreaking project is the Euclid mission, a space telescope created by the European Space Agency and due to launch soon. Euclid's goal is to map out the dark universe's shape by studying how galaxies are distributed and how light is bent, gravitational lensing, by dark matter and dark energy which can tell us more about how the universe is growing. Gravitational lensing, a concept from Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, has become crucial in studying where dark matter is in the universe. Here's how it works. When a massive object like a galaxy or cluster of galaxies warps space around it, it bends the path of light coming from objects behind it. This can make the distant objects look bigger, distorted or even appear in multiple places depending on how everything lines up. Gravitational lensing is super helpful for studying dark matter because dark matter doesn't emit, absorb or reflect light. This makes it invisible to regular telescopes. But dark matter does have gravity, which affects how stars move in galaxies, how gas behaves in galaxy clusters and how light travels through space. By scrutinizing the light emitted by distant galaxies and quasars, which undergoes bending due to intervening dark matter, astronomers can chart the spread and density of dark matter, even though it remains invisible to direct observation. Gravitational lensing manifests in two primary forms, strong and weak. Strong lensing manifests when the foreground object possesses significant mass and is aligned in a manner that produces highly distorted, or multiple images of the background entity. This phenomenon can yield remarkable occurrences such as Einstein. Rings, where a perfectly aligned lensing object generates a circular image of the light source. Through the examination of these rings and multiple images, astronomers can directly plot the mass distribution of the lensing object, unveiling the presence and configuration of dark matter. Weak lensing, albeit more subtle, is widespread and arises when the distortion of background entities is minimal. This type of lensing subtly alters the shapes of numerous distant galaxies, leading to a cohesive distortion pattern detectable statistically across vast swathes of the celestial sphere. By quantifying the shape distortions of millions of galaxies, astronomers can craft intricate maps delineating the distribution of dark matter on grand scales, elucidating the cosmic framework of dark matter that underpins the observable cosmos. Gravitational lensing has furnished some of the most compelling evidence for dark matter, validating its existence and furnishing insights into its characteristics. For instance, observations of colliding galaxy clusters like the Bullet Cluster have harnessed gravitational lensing to independently chart the distribution of dark matter and ordinary matter. These observations have demonstrated that dark matter solely interacts via gravity, sidestepping other forces that influence normal matter, a pivotal element bolstering the dark matter hypothesis. The discovery of Oumuamua in October 2017 was a significant moment in astronomy. It marked the first time we observed an object from outside our solar system passing through. This event challenged our existing ideas and opened up new avenues for research. Oumuamua, named after the Hawaiian word for scout or messenger, was spotted by the PanStars One telescope in Hawaii as it came closest to the Sun. Its shape was unlike typical asteroids or comets within our solar system being highly elongated. Additionally, its unexpected acceleration as it moved through our solar system intrigued scientists. This discovery is important for a few reasons. Interstellar visitors Oumuamua showed us that objects from other star systems can travel through our solar system. This indicates that materials can move between stars, which affects how we understand the formation and development of planetary systems. It also raises the possibility that the basic ingredients for planets and potentially life can travel between distant star systems. 
composition and origins. At first, scientists thought Oumuamua was an asteroid. However, it didn't have the typical tail of a comet as it approached the Sun, which puzzled astronomers. Further studies suggested it might be a new type of object, possibly a fragment from a disintegrated comet or even a piece of interstellar debris. Learning more about Oumuamua's makeup and where it came from could give us insights into the processes happening in other planetary systems and the variety of objects formed in those faraway places. Oumuamua, a celestial object that passed through our solar system, surprised scientists with its unusual behavior. It didn't just move in response to the sun's gravity like most objects, it also showed unexpected changes in speed and direction. This puzzled experts, leading to theories such as outgassing, where gas escapes from its surface, similar to what happens in comets. However, unlike typical comets, Oumuamua didn't have a visible coma or tail, making it hard to confirm. In 2019, amateur astronomer Gennady Borisov discovered another interstellar visitor, named 2i Borisov. This marked a significant moment in space exploration, as it was only the second object from outside our solar system detected passing through. Unlike Oumuamua, Borisov was quickly identified as a comet because it displayed classic comet features like a glowing coma and tail caused by the heating of its icy surface as it neared the sun. Studying Borisov provided scientists with a rare chance to examine material from another star system. Surprisingly, its composition resembled comets from our own solar system. This suggests that the processes forming comets might be universal across the universe. Understanding these processes is crucial for unravelling how planets and potentially life-supporting molecules form in other solar systems. Borisov's path also confirmed it came from beyond our solar system, entering with a trajectory indicating it wasn't bound to the Sun's gravity. By observing its speed and route, scientists gained insights into how interstellar objects interact with our solar system. This knowledge aids our understanding of both our own cosmic neighborhood and the broader dynamics of the universe. The detection of Borisov, following closely after Oumuamua, hints at the possibility that interstellar objects visiting our solar system might be more common than previously believed. This suggests that the exchange of material between planetary systems within our galaxy could have a significant impact on their development and potentially even aid in spreading life-supporting compounds across the vast reaches of the galaxy. The observations of Borisov highlight the importance of staying vigilant and advancing our technologies for detecting and studying these interstellar visitors. With the improvements in telescope technology and observation networks, astronomers are optimistic about discovering more interstellar objects. Each new finding provides valuable clues about their origins, paths through space and physical characteristics. These discoveries contribute to our understanding of the universe's history and shed light on the intricate processes that shape the formation and progression of planetary systems. Hogue's object, a captivating galaxy, draws attention due to its unique and mesmerizing appearance. Classified as a ring galaxy, it boasts a nearly perfect circular ring of young, hot blue stars surrounding a brighter, more concentrated yellow core of older stars. This rare arrangement challenges our comprehension of how galaxies form and evolve, making Hoag's object a captivating subject for intensive scrutiny and intrigue in the field of astronomy. Discovered in 1950 by astronomer Arthur Hoag, Hoag's object initially puzzled scientists who mistook it for a planetary nebula. However, further investigation revealed its true nature as a galaxy. Positioned about 600 million light-years away, Hoag's object is a rare example of a ring galaxy, characterized by a distinct circular structure. The formation of Hoag's object's ring remains a topic of debate among astronomers. One theory suggests it could have emerged from a collision and merger between two galaxies. In this scenario, a smaller galaxy passing through a larger one might have sparked a burst of star formation resulting in the ring. Another possibility is that the galaxy's original disk experienced a unique instability, leading it to rearrange into the ring pattern. What makes Hoag's object even more fascinating is the discovery of a second, fainter ring outside the main one. 
This suggests a complex history involving multiple galactic events or periodic star formation episodes contributing to the galaxy's current appearance. Moving beyond galaxies, there's the intriguing concept of zombie stars. These are stellar remnants that have defied expectations by surviving a supernova explosion, which is typically seen as the end of a star's life. This survival indicates a partial or failed supernova event, leaving behind a core that continues to emit light, a stellar resurrection of sorts, challenging conventional ideas about stellar death and survival in the cosmos. Observations of certain supernovae have led to the concept of zombie stars, which are stars that undergo a peculiar type of explosion. One example involves type IA supernovae, which are explosions of white dwarfs in binary systems. These explosions are important for measuring distances in the universe and have revealed the universe's accelerating expansion. However, some observed supernovae are dimmer than expected for type YA, indicating that the white dwarf wasn't completely destroyed, but instead lost mass, leaving behind a damaged remnant. The discovery of zombie stars challenges our understanding of how stars evolve and the various ways supernovae occur. It suggests that the final stages of stellar evolution can have different outcomes, influenced by factors like the star's mass, composition, and interactions with. Companion stars. This complexity challenges our simple classifications of stellar life cycles and emphasizes the intricate physics behind supernovae. Studying zombie stars helps us understand the conditions necessary for different types of supernova explosions and how partial destruction of stars occurs. This research is vital for understanding how heavy elements are created in supernovae explosions, as zombie stars may provide unique environments for these processes. Additionally, studying zombie stars improves our models of type IA supernovae, which are crucial for measuring cosmic distances accurately. Chi C 8462852, also known as Tabby's star, has intrigued astronomers and the public alike due to its irregular changes in brightness. Located about 1,470 light-years away in the Cygnus constellation, this star's unusual dimming events have sparked numerous theories about their cause. Discovered by citizen scientists as part of the Planet Hunters project, which uses data from the Kepler Space Telescope, Tabby's star's fluctuations in brightness are unlike anything seen in other stars, leading to widespread speculation. The behavior of KIC 8462852, also known as Tabby's star, caught astronomers' attention due to its unusual light pattern. Instead of the steady dimming associated with planetary transits, its brightness dropped by as much as 22% in irregular intervals. This irregularity puzzled scientists as it didn't match known natural phenomena. One explanation suggests a swarm of comets or debris orbiting the star could intermittently block its light from our view on Earth. This could occur if external factors like the close passage of another star disrupted the comet belt, sending them into orbits that intersect with Chi C. 8462852. However, the significant dimming observed would require an immense amount of material, making this explanation less likely. Another theory proposes that the dimming results from dust clouds formed by the collision and breakup of nearby asteroids or planets. This scenario could explain the irregular dimming, but would require exceptionally rare timing for observation. A more speculative idea involves the notion of an alien megastructure, such as a Dyson sphere constructed around the star to harness its energy. While controversial, this hypothesis remains a topic of debate within the scientific community. Although intriguing, the concept of hypervelocity stars is considered improbable by most scientists, serving more as a testament to the enigmatic nature of Tabby's star than a plausible explanation. Hypervelocity stars are like cosmic sprinters, racing through the galaxy at speeds so extreme that they can break free from the Milky Way's gravitational grip. These stellar speedsters zoom at hundreds of kilometers per second, far outpacing the typical velocities of stars in our galaxy, including our own Sun. The exploration of hypervelocity stars offers astronomers valuable insights into the dynamic workings of the cosmos and the mighty forces capable of launching stars to such incredible speeds. Initially predicted by theoretical models, the first hypervelocity star wasn't observed until 2005. 
Since then, advancements in observational techniques have revealed several more of these speedy stars, each shedding light on the violent processes that propel them to such remarkable velocities. The leading explanation for their origin involves interactions with the supermassive black hole lurking at the center of the Milky Way. According to this theory, a binary star system, two stars orbiting each other, ventures too close to the black hole. The immense gravitational pull of the black hole tears the binary apart, capturing one star while violently ejecting the other at a fraction of the speed of light. This cosmic slingshot launches the star out of the galaxy, embarking it on a solitary journey through the vastness of intergalactic space. Another scenario that could produce hypervelocity stars involves the collision of multiple star systems or the explosive demise of a star in a binary system, with the resulting forces flinging one of the stars outward at high speed. While less frequent than interactions with the supermassive black hole, these occurrences add to the variety of hypervelocity stars observed. Exploring hypervelocity stars carries significant implications for astrophysics. Firstly, they act as indirect probes of the surroundings near the galaxy's central supermassive black hole, offering valuable insights into the dynamics and interactions within one of the universe's most extreme environments. Moreover, the paths and speeds of hypervelocity stars can help map the gravitational landscape of the Milky Way, aiding our comprehension of the galaxy's mass distribution, including its dark matter halo. Luminous red novae represent a unique and captivating category of stellar explosions, distinguished by their distinct red hue, transient nature and luminosity, which falls between that of classical novae and supernovae. These cosmic phenomena have intrigued astronomers as they delve into the intricate processes of stellar evolution and interaction. Luminous red novae are believed to originate from the fusion of two stars, a phenomenon that distinguishes them from other types of stellar explosions. Typically, this scenario involves a binary star system where the stars are sufficiently close for material to transfer from one to the other, ultimately leading to a merger. This merging process releases a substantial amount of energy, resulting in the luminous outburst characteristic of LRN and expels material into space, forming an expanding shell of gas and dust that gives the nova its red appearance. Studying LRN provides valuable insights into the dynamics of binary star systems and the final stages of stellar evolution. The sequence leading to an LRN event often begins with a common envelope phase, where one star in a binary system expands into a red giant and envelops its companion. Friction within the envelope causes the stars to draw closer together, eventually culminating in a merger. When two stars merge, the energy released heats up the material they eject, causing it to shine brightly in what's known as a red nova event. One example, V1309 Scorpii, which erupted in 2008, has been extensively studied. Prior observations of this system showed that the two stars were spiraling closer together, indicated by a decrease in their orbital period. This event is crucial for understanding luminous red novae, shedding light on their nature and mechanics. LRN help us grasp the variety of transient astronomical events and the outcomes of binary star systems. They also play a role in synthesizing elements, enriching the interstellar medium chemically. Magnetars are an intriguing type of neutron star characterized by their incredibly powerful magnetic fields, the strongest in the universe. Neutron stars form from massive stars that explode in supernovae condensing into incredibly dense objects about the size of a city, but with masses greater than the sun. What makes magnetars unique is their magnetic field, which can be over a thousand times stronger than that of a typical neutron star, reaching up to 1015 Gauss. For comparison, Earth's magnetic field averages about 0.5 Gauss. The exact origin of magnetars' intense magnetic fields is still under investigation, but it's believed that they result from the conservation of magnetic flux during the star's collapse. As the progenitor star collapses, its magnetic field lines are compressed into a smaller volume, greatly increasing the field's strength. Magnetars are known for their violent behavior, emitting high-energy X-rays and gamma rays. They can produce massive flares and bursts of radiation so powerful that they can impact Earth's atmosphere and temporarily alter its magnetic field, despite being thousands of light-years away. 
These emissions are thought to arise from the instability and realignment of the magnetar's magnetic field, releasing enormous amounts of energy. The discovery of magnetars has significantly enhanced our understanding of the extreme conditions in the universe. Studying magnetars offers a unique window into understanding extreme physics. These celestial objects boast mind-boggling densities and magnetic fields, allowing scientists to push the boundaries of physical theories. They're associated with intriguing cosmic events like short gamma-ray bursts and anomalous X-ray pulses, shedding light on different paths stars can take in their evolution. By delving into magnetars, researchers can also gain insights into gravitational waves and how matter behaves under intense pressure, like what's found in a nucleus. Exploring these extreme conditions could unveil new insights into the fundamental nature of matter, offering glimpses into the behavior of atoms and particles in environments we can't replicate on Earth. Now, let's talk about wolf Rayet stars. These stars mark a pivotal stage in the life of massive stars, showcasing some of the most dynamic processes in stellar evolution. Discovered in 1867 by French astronomers Charles Wolf and Georges Rayet, they're known for their ferocious stellar winds and the shedding of their outer layers. When we observe their spectra, we see broad emission lines, indicating the presence of heavy elements like carbon, nitrogen and oxygen. Why are these stars so important? Well, they're giants, typically more than 20 times the mass of our sun, and they're shedding mass at an extraordinary rate due to the intense radiation they emit. This shedding process is vital for their evolution, as it exposes the heavier elements at their core by stripping away the outer hydrogen layers. This enriches the space around them with heavy elements, influencing the chemical makeup of our galaxy and providing the building blocks for future stars and planets. wolf rayet stars are like the rock stars of star formation areas, often signaling the beginning of a cosmic fireworks show. When they reach the end of their lives, they don't go quietly. They explode dramatically, leaving behind either a neutron star or a black hole. Some of these explosions are so intense that they're thought to create the most energetic events known to us, called long-duration gamma-ray bursts. Moving on to another cosmic spectacle, we come across Fermi bubbles. Think of them as gigantic cosmic balloons filled with super-energetic particles stretching out from the center of our galaxy for about 25,000 light-years in both directions. Discovered in 2010 by NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope, these bubbles shine brightly in gamma ray light, which is the highest energy form of light. Despite their grandeur, the exact origins of Fermi bubbles are still being debated among astronomers. One popular idea is that they were formed by past outbursts from the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A asterisk, which hangs out at the heart of the Milky Way. These outbursts might have happened millions of years ago when the black hole swallowed up a bunch of stuff, releasing a ton of energy and shooting particles out into space, forming the bubbles. Another idea suggests that the bubbles might be the result of intense bursts of star formation near the center of our galaxy. Picture this. Big stars explode as supernovae, releasing a burst of energy into space and kick-starting the creation of these massive bubbles. These explosions could also speed up particles to incredibly fast speeds, adding to the gamma-ray light we see. Why are Fermi bubbles so important? Well, firstly, they're like a historical archive of our galaxy's wild past. By studying them, we can uncover clues about the events that have shaped the Milky Way over time. Understanding how they form and what fuels them can teach us a lot about supermassive black holes and how they influence the evolution of galaxies. Moreover, the particles buzzing around inside the Fermi bubbles are thought to be a source of cosmic rays, those super-energetic particles zipping through space at breakneck speeds. Figuring out where these cosmic rays come from can give us a deeper understanding of how they're produced and how they affect our galaxy. Plus, Fermi bubbles are not just unique to our galaxy. They're a common sight in other galaxies, too. By studying them here, we can compare notes with observations from other galaxies and get a better grasp of these bubble-like structures across the universe. After the exploration of Fermi bubbles, scientists delved into the concept of wormholes. These theoretical constructs, rooted in Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, 
propose a fascinating possibility, connecting distant points in both space and time. This could potentially allow for traversing vast cosmic distances in significantly shorter durations than conventional space travel methods, such as traveling at the speed of light. The term wormhole was coined by theoretical physicist John Archibald Wheeler in the 1950s, though the idea itself stems from a solution proposed by Einstein and Nathan Rosen back in 1935. They envisioned these bridges, now known as Einstein-Rosen bridges, as structures linking different regions of space-time, possibly even connecting separate universes. A common analogy used to understand wormholes is that of a tunnel with two ends located at different points in space-time, akin to a tunnel with entrances in different cities. The inside of a wormhole could theoretically provide a shortcut for travelers between its ends, enabling faster-than-light travel compared to conventional methods outside the wormhole. However, despite the intriguing theoretical groundwork, there is currently no empirical evidence to support the existence of wormholes or their practicality for space travel. One major obstacle lies in the stability of wormholes. Theoretical models suggest that the throat of a wormhole would collapse too quickly for anything to pass through naturally. Sustaining an open wormhole would require exotic matter with negative energy density, a substance that has yet to be definitively observed in nature. The idea of using exotic matter to stabilize wormholes presents a potential solution to prevent their collapse. However, the feasibility of generating and controlling sufficient amounts of this exotic matter remains uncertain and speculative. Even if we could stabilize wormholes, navigating them would pose significant challenges. There's no guarantee regarding where or when the other end of the wormhole might emerge, making it a risky prospect for anything beyond theoretical exploration. The concept of wormholes holds profound implications for our understanding of the universe and space-time. It challenges conventional ideas about distance and connectivity, suggesting that the universe's fabric might be more intricate and interconnected than previously thought. Additionally, wormholes open up intriguing possibilities for time travel, as they could theoretically allow for movement not just across space, but through time itself. As we delve deeper into the realms of astronomy and cosmology, it becomes clear how these scientific revelations impact our philosophical outlook on existence and our position in the universe. With each discovery, our perspective on life and our place in this vast universe undergoes transformation, urging us to reconsider our understanding of significance, identity and unity. Recent breakthroughs from detecting gravitational waves to capturing the image of a black hole's event horizon not only enhance our comprehension of the physical cosmos, but also provoke profound contemplations on the essence of reality itself. Gravitational waves, for example, validate a century-old prediction from Einstein's general relativity theory, unlocking fresh avenues for comprehending the universe's most cataclysmic occurrences. This pivotal achievement highlights our intrinsic connection with the cosmos, enabling us to now perceive the echoes in space-time caused by distant astrophysical phenomena. The unprecedented imaging of a black hole's event horizon, once deemed unattainable, further stretches the limits of our imagination and scientific prowess. This remarkable feat not only furnishes tangible proof of these mysterious entities, but also acts as a sobering acknowledgement of the vast enigmas that await exploration in the universe. It epitomizes our unyielding quest for knowledge and the potency of collective human endeavor in unraveling the secrets of the cosmos. The quest for exoplanets and the pursuit of extraterrestrial life have profoundly influenced our philosophical reflections on existence. Uncovering planets orbiting remote stars within habitable zones where life akin to our own could potentially thrive, challenges our perception of uniqueness and incites contemplation on the prospect of life beyond our planet. This pursuit enriches our comprehension of life's potential diversity and resilience, emphasizing that we might merely represent one facet of life in a universe brimming with possibilities. Certain cosmological theories suggest the idea of the multiverse, proposing that there may be numerous universes each operating under its own set of physical laws. While this notion is speculative, it has significant implications for how we perceive reality and our position within it. It challenges the concept of a single universe, 
and prompts us to envision a much larger and more diverse cosmic landscape. The universe is full of intriguing mysteries waiting to be unraveled. From the elusive dark matter and dark energy, which appear to govern the structure and expansion of the cosmos, to the intriguing possibility of parallel universes and the enigmatic nature of black holes, where the known laws of physics behave in unexpected ways, our journey of exploration is ongoing. With each discovery, we uncover not only answers but also a wealth of new questions, each more captivating than the last. Share your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. That is going to. The end of yet another Space Drift documentary. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care.